Hey guys, it's May May and welcome to Wednesday's video and I hope I'm not making you too dizzy. We'll talk about this in just a second. But today I'm going to make a project that is completely and 100% inspired by all those beautiful things we're seeing in Michaels and all the hobby stores with the golds and the black and the whites and all those pretty things. And I actually saw Heidi Swap put together an album and I thought that's what I want to do. She made a little 4x4 Instagram album which was super cute and that's really my inspiration. I totally am taking this straight from what she did. Now I want to show you something. I did not have any black and white paper, so I contacted my friend Melody because Melody of Melody Lane Designs has paper that she designs and creates herself. This is paper that she hand makes. It is not digitally created. That's a hard word to say. She actually hand makes it, and I want to show you this paper pack. By the way, this paper pack is called Amy. I love it. She named it after me, which was so cool. I was just blown away. So look at this first one. We have the chevron and then the stripes, polka dots, and look, two different colors. And then we have, what would this be called? Diamonds. I like that one. Another stripe, which I'm in love with. We're going to get a lot of use out of that. Some marble paper. How cool is this? This is very in right now, the marbled things. This is another form of that, like, um, diamond piece. This is a wider stripe, which I love. And look, polka dots. Now, you may think you can only print these on white paper and get the black and white effect, but that's not true. Look, I printed it on craft. I love it on the craft paper. And I also printed it on some blue because we're going to use this in our product in our project today. So this paper, I'll put a link below. This is the Amy pack. And I think she's given us a coupon code. I don't remember the exact um, amount, but I'll put that in the description. So if you guys are interested in picking up some of this paper or the other one she's got, you can get that from the description. This will be the main part of our product project today. And secondly, man, my friends on YouTube are super cool, y'all. They are doing some amazing things. This is from my friend Christopher Allen, and he is the designer, owner, creator of Brutus Monroe. And look, this is embossing powder and some ink. Now, I'm not going to be using this ink today because it doesn't go with our project, but this is his chalk ink, and I will be using that in an upcoming video. But today, I'm going to be using this gilded embossing powder. When I saw this embossing powder, when I saw him demo it, I'm like, okay, that'll do what I want to do. Now then, we're going to play with a whole bunch of stuff, but the first thing I want to talk to you about is our covers. You know I like to use matte board. This is what they use to matte photos with, and I've been tossing around the size I wanted my album to be, and I decided I wanted to, it to be a four and a half by seven album. The reason is I want you to be able to put four by six pictures in, and even though most people cut those pictures down, I still want there to be plenty of room. I also want there to be enough room here because we're going to use the cinch. So many of you asked me about doing projects with our cinch, and I love mine, so we're going to use it here. So I cut these two pieces four and a half by seven and they are chipboard pieces. Then we're going to cut our pages. I'm going to use this paper that Melody designed as my pages and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run through and cut the edges off of this paper. Now let me tell you, if you have a printer that will print edge to edge, you'll have no waste with these designs. My printer won't print edge to edge, and I'm okay with that because you know what? I didn't have to go buy a paper pad. This is literally paper I had in my stash, and Melody's papers are so inexpensive that this little bit that I'm cutting off the edges is not going to be a problem for me. So I've gone through all the paper, I trimmed the edges down, and then I trimmed everything down to seven by four and a half. Now what I want to do is I want to take these pages and kind of mix them up. Like I don't want two, I don't want two craft pages together, and I don't want two blue pages together. So I'm going to pull these out because I'm probably going to need to put a lot of the white, the black and white in between. So do something like this and grab one. Do a couple of these and grab one. I just want to mix them up, and I don't care if they're even amounts or anything. That doesn't matter to me. I just want to mix them all together. We're going to add another page in, too, that I think you're going to like, but it's going to be different. There we go. So we got all the pages mixed up. So when you flip through your book, your colors will be intermingled. You won't just have black and white and craft and blue all together. I like the blue with the black and white. What do you guys think? Do you like mixing that blue in there? I do. I think it's cool. Okay, so these are our pages for our book. These are our covers. I want to cover these guys and make them super cute. And I thought I'd take some of these pages to do it because they're the right size. And what cover do I want to do? I'm just going to flip through and see. I really like that because I like how busy that is. 
I like the stripes too. I'm gonna have a hard time not choosing stripes, I think. Oh, our polka dots. Maybe use that on the back. That's cute. Let's use those two pieces. To cover the um, board, actually, I'm not gonna cover the black part because I like that. I'm only gonna cover the white part. So like this polka dot sheet is gonna go right here. But this is some adhesive sheet that I get from Punch Place Plus. And I love this stuff because it covers the entire surface and I don't have to worry about with books. I don't like to worry about the paper, you know, folding up on the edge or what have you. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open this up. I just peel off one side of it and then I'm just going to stick it to one corner. Just make sure I get this covering the entire piece of chipboard. Just like that. I'm going to turn this over so the sticky's facing up now. And I'm just going to cut this away with my X-Acto. And I just run this knife right beside the chipboard here. And then right beside the chipboard here. And this now makes my chipboard completely adhesive on the back. And then this piece, don't get rid of it because it's still good stuff. Just stick it back to your sheet, to your little backer sheet, because you can use it again. So this is how the adhesive sheet comes. It's a full sheet, it's huge, and I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the adhesive on the other one as well. I'll put a link to this below. This is the same product as the sticky tape that I use. It's just the sheet version of it. And I think it is the best thing since shirt pockets. This time I'm just gonna roll it back like this. I'm just gonna lay this little guy in there like that. And then I'm just gonna let this fall back over. And that way we'll cover the whole back side of that. And I can seal this back down and not have to do it by hand like I did the first time. Then it's just a matter of cutting it away. And I may have to make two passes because I'm gonna have to cut through both pieces of the adhesive. Or you know, through the backer as well. There's one pass. And two. And I'm telling you, I will use every ounce of this um, adhesive sheet. I love it. All right, so now these guys are ready for the pages that we're going to put on them. Let's start with this one because I love the polka dots. Now then that you've got your adhesive on, you just peel off the um, backer sheet and your adhesive will stay in place. The trick is to get a hold of the backer sheet. There we go. So you peel off this backer and the entire piece is now adhesive. So all the way to the edge, you know your paper is gonna stick and that's what I love about it. So we're gonna line our paper up to the edge all the way down. Now I will tell you something, once it's down, it's down. So take your time getting it lined up because you won't be able to correct it. Now I can see that my Chipboard is not cut perfectly, so I'm just going to run this X-Acto down and see if I can cut some of that away. And if I can't, I can come back with um, some sandpaper or a distress tool and make that match up. Let me show you this. If you're nervous about messing with it, just fold it down halfway. This is something else I've done too. So that way you don't have any sticky here, so if you want to have your hand a place to rest, um, you'll do that. And then you'll just line this up like so in one corner. Stick that into place and then just pull this dude out and it's stuck down. Easy enough, huh? Now on the edges, just to be sure how I told you, you could take um, some sandpaper or a nail file and just kind of rub those edges. And that way you know you don't have any adhesive sticking off and your paper is all to where it needs to be, all even at the edges. Okay, so I've got either my front or my back. I'm not sure. I may let that be the front because I love polka dots. I think that's super cute. And then all these pages. Now, remember how I told you we were going to add another page? Let me show you how the book is going to be, how thick it's going to be. It's not bad. I mean, it's a pretty thick book, but you'll be able to get a lot of photos and things in there. Okay, we're going to add another page. Now, this may seem a bit boring at first, but this is acetate. This is actually what I use is overhead projector film. This is from an entire box of that that my aunt gave me when she cleaned out her office space, and I have been loving it. And I'm just going to cut it down to the same size as my pages. I'm cutting it down to four and a half by seven. Several sheets of it, because I want lots of pages, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it, or at least I'm going to attempt to do it. I think it'll work. 
So before we put our book together, I want to do our embossing. Now you might be wondering where these are gonna go. They're gonna go in between these pages in different places, but we're gonna emboss on them first with some, some of that beautiful gold embossing. And I'm also going to, let me show you these guys. I cut from my Cricut all of these little words and shapes and arrows and here's another word says faith and these are those little um you know they're so popular right now the diamonds and the gemstones and i cut a fleur de lis these upside down we'll do it that way here's another gemstone i didn't clean that one out good and these leaves which i think are so pretty and here's some more of the arrows. Okay, so I cut all this from the Cricut, and here's what I did. I cut it on craft colored cardstock. Not that I think that's gonna matter so much, but I have some craft paper that's really sturdy, and I thought it would give me a good base to emboss on. So we're going to emboss all of these in gold, and we're gonna emboss onto these in gold. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you doing one of these and one of those. That way you don't have to watch me do all of this, and we'll get back together and put everything together. So let's start with Let's do this really delicate rose piece. Now my Cricut totally ate up that centerpiece. It did not even get that even close to being done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna emboss it like this and then when I use it, I'm probably just gonna cut it away and bring those together and get rid of that centerpiece because it totally has nothing in there now. So we'll start with that one first and do that one together. I'll move all these to the side and we'll do a piece of acetate right after that. Now, I don't know if you have embossed before, but I'm gonna show you how this works. You just use your embossing powder, and this is a beautiful, fine powder. I think we're gonna get a really good result from that. And you wanna use Versamark ink or something like it. Versamark ink is a watermark stamp pad, so what it does is it keeps the design or the image wet a really long time. I'm gonna go ahead and press my Versamark pad down onto the rose shape. And because I'm gonna be doing a lot of these, cause I'm gonna emboss every one of those. I mean, I'm going embossing crazy. I think this is gonna be so neat. It's just gonna mimic what we see in the stores lately. All right, then you take your embossing powder and you just tump it out all over your image. And don't worry about wasting it because we're gonna pick it right back up. I'm just gonna pick that up and shake off the excess. And I'm not trying to go too crazy with the excess because I don't mind it being very thick. I might even emboss it twice, we'll see. Now I'm just gonna take this and put it right back in to my container. I'm gonna put the lid on this before I start to emboss. And because when I use heat on my um, cutting mat, it tends to buckle it. I like to pick the image up that I'm gonna emboss and I'm probably gonna cut away most of this centerpiece. So I'm gonna pick it up from there so it won't even matter if it doesn't emboss right there. And then I'm gonna use my heat tool on it. Now go ahead and heat your, this is a close to my heart heat tool. Heat it up before you get to the project and that way it'll be nice and hot before you get there and it'll do it quicker. Can you see the beautiful shine on that? That is stunning. That is gonna be perfect for what I'm looking for. So there is our roses in gold embossing, and I'm just gonna move these to the side, and I'm gonna keep embossing. So check this out, guys. I embossed all of those pieces, and they are stunning. Stunning. I just love them. Now it was not quick. It probably took me 30 minutes or so to do all of these, but this is going to be well worth it in our album. And it gives us that look of the gold foil, even though I don't have the gold foil or a way to do it. So this is the paper pieces. Now let me show you my plan for the acetate pieces. I have this old cutting mat I like to use for embossing on because I tend to mess up my actual one if I'm not careful. Here's the acetate and I'm going to get some paper. Again, I ruined that other paper. I used it so much. So here's a piece of paper and I'm actually going to use two pieces again. So I got this piece here and lay this acetate down. Now, I went through my stash and I found some embossing folders that I thought, uh, not embossing folders, some background stamps that I thought would look cool on the acetate. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ink this up with the Versamark, and then I'm gonna stamp it onto the acetate, and I'm gonna try to emboss it. Now, some of you may have tried this before and know that I'm fixing to fail terribly, but I've not tried it before, and I wanna find out. <laughs> and there's only one way for me to find out, and that is to try it. My Versamark pad is so dry, I've got to re-wet it. Okay, 
there's that. Now, on these acetate pieces, I don't really care if this covers the whole thing. I'm just trying to get like an accent of gold. I don't care if it looks distressed or what have you. I just want the little accent of gold on there. That seemed to come off really well. Now, the reason I had two pieces and I didn't show this well a while ago, I removed this piece because that one has all the Versamark on it, and then I sprinkle on this second piece. That way I'm not inking up a whole bunch of Versamark that I don't need to, or not embossing, powdering a whole bunch of Versamark I don't need to. Now, one thing I did not think about, and that is that I probably should have powdered this, and I did not think about it, and we'll find out if that's going to be a problem here in just a second. Doesn't look too bad. Let me take this off to the side and blow off the excess. I'm just gonna take this and put it right back in the jar. And even with all that embossing I did, I still have all that left. Isn't that awesome? Because I'm not anywhere near through with embossing. Okay, so lay this guy here and I'm gonna heat it up and see what happens. So I think I got it, but I was trying not to stay in one spot too awful long, but check it out, it seemed to do just fine. And now I have this really cool page for inside the book. Let's do another one. Now on this one, I'm gonna do two different things. One is I have this stamp that was sent to me and it is a um, chandelier and I think it is so cool. And I'm gonna use it in the center of this page. Let me get a block here, lay that down. not quite right that's better and I'm gonna ink this up with the Versamark again and I'm going to stamp it in the center of the page just like so okay and then while the page is sitting here I'm gonna take this Versamark pad and I'm gonna run it around the edge of this acetate just to give it something to grab onto because I want to do some edge of the page embossing too. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? So I'm going to make a few more of these and then we'll get right back together. Just when you thought I couldn't possibly emboss anymore, we're going to. So we've done our Cricut pieces, we've done our acetate, and now we're going to do the edges of this just like we did that piece of acetate. I'm going to take the Versamark because this is going to be my cover and I'm gonna run that down. Just kinda getting some on the edge there. Kinda worn and ragged, I don't need it to be perfect. Just like so. Okay, and I'm gonna do that to both the front and the back covers. This gilded look is so in, this foil and metallic look, and I'm really into it, so I'm thinking, this would be a great gift. You know what, for like if you have a teenager that you make things for, maybe it's somebody going to high school for the first time, maybe you wanna give them um, a little memory book for their high school, their first year at high school, or maybe it's um, their senior year. Wouldn't this be a cool senior gift for a girl? Um, or you could turn it into a guy one very easily. I just love, there's nothing about metallics that, don't say er that doesn't say everybody. I think anybody can use metallics. So this is now our cover and our back. Look at that, I love it. Oh, we're getting somewhere. All right, now I wanna take the pages that we have created and I wanna put those acetate pieces between them. And I only ended up doing four. Did I tell you that? I don't remember. But like when you open the book, I want you to see this one first and then I'm gonna separate it into about a quarter and then I'm gonna add this one, which you saw me do those. Let me show you. This other one, look at this one. I did this with a doily stamp. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna stick that one in there. And then I'm gonna separate one more time and put this one in. So that gives me some clear pages with the little acetate. I'm sure you've seen that if you've looked around. If you look um, on Pinterest, you'll see where the books have the little acetate inserts in there and it's pretty neat. So there's that. And then this is my cover. And then this is my base. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and cinch this together because once we decorate it, it'll just be, you know, going inside of there and putting our pretty little pieces on. So let me get the cinch out. 
So this is the cinch binding system. It's a little machine and I've had it for a really long time and I've only used it about three times, honestly. And I should use it more because I really do like it. But I want to show you what I did. These first seven pegs are all pressed in and these last ones are pulled out. The reason is when you pull these pegs out, holes won't punch there. And I don't want holes to punch there because what I'm going to do is use this edge that kind of lifts up and it kind of stops the little book there or the cover. And this will center those holes in my cover. So you just have to kind of do the math for whatever size you're using and get that right. So that's how we're going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. If it's open, you guys can't see as well. But that's where we're going to be poking holes today. So I'm going to go ahead and put the holes in this one. And it only went to those seven holes. So when I take it out, you'll see that the holes are only, well, it's kind of hard to see because of the the embossing but it starts here and it goes to here and it's centered and now I'm going to go ahead and poke the holes in the back cover and I'm using that little edge to line it up so I know I got the holes in the right spot so there's our back cover and now we need to poke holes in all of our pages and we can just do those in sections so I'm just going to take this first section it's really easy to press, which is good. I think it this arm gives you a lot of leverage. So if you have a lot of, you know, if you have any hand dexterity issues or anything, it's really easy to press. So you should be able to use the cinch pretty easily. All right, I've got myself turned around here. Now we'll get them back in order. So there we go. All right, and then we'll put the cover on here. And I want to show you what um, you can get to go with these. These are the O-rings or C-ring. They call them different, I don't know if they call them different things, but I tend to call them different things. And so, what I'm going to do is take the cover and see how many of them I need. I'm going to need, I just do it like this, and I need it through this one. And now I'm just going to use some little snips and just snip that away there. They cut away pretty easy. Okay, so now I have all the holes punched and they are lined up and ready to go, but there's something I want to show you. I have embossing powder everywhere. I make the biggest mess. Okay, so the front cover is here facing up. The back cover will go here. So you'll see the back side and the front side, but here's what we need to do. We need to take this back side and flip it over. All this really does is closes it up so that you don't see kind of the workings of this guy. Now I want to show you this. On the side of the cinch, with this is maybe hard to see, there's this little area that you can kind of hook your little binder clip on and it holds it in place while you load these dudes on there. I don't really have too much trouble doing this even without putting it in here. You can kind of do that by hand, but that's the way you do it. All right, so then we turn this around to the back side. Now my um, O-rings or C, C-rings, whatever you call these, mine are seven eighths of an inch. So I'm going to push this in so that it's flat against the inside of that cinch and then push down on this arm all the way. Now because I have it set to the right size, it's just going to close it exactly where it needs to go and not any further. Now we're going to take the back cover and flip it around and then it hides the working so you just get this nice clean cinched book. Too cool. Now I'm ready for the fun part which is putting these guys on. I just love how these turned out. I'll make sure I put a link to this embossing powder below from Christopher's store. This is so pretty. And I want to decide what I want on the front. And originally, I had thought about using the roses on the front because I think they're really pretty. I'm going to zoom you guys in so you can see. Maybe that'll help you. So that I was kind of thinking about using the roses on the front and then some of these leaves kind of off to the side. But since that didn't work out so well, I think I'm going to go away from that and figure something else out for that. But I have this one that says love. Look how pretty that piece is. Wouldn't that be pretty right down there? Just simple and just on the front. And maybe even, hmm, maybe a diamond. That kind of makes it look like a wedding, doesn't it? So let's don't do that. <laughs> how about one of these arrows? I honestly don't think I need anything but this word love on the front. I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put that on. So I'm just going to use art glitter glue to put this down because it's got this fine tip. And I want to get glue everywhere. If you have a Xyron, this is a great place to use your Xyron on these thin little pieces. That's one of those kind of sticker making machines. It's so much more than that, but that's the best way I know to describe it. This is a great piece to use a Xyron on. Okay, so I got glue everywhere, including all on me. 
and I'm going to bring this down kind of to the bottom just adhere that down I love that I love get it <laughs> I love it I'm just thinking that that is so pretty and so modern just like what you're seeing in the stores so now we flip to the first page and there's our chandelier page that's clear and then here's our solid pages and I'm just going to come through here and just add my embellishments in different places I think I'm gonna work on the back of this I think this would be pretty to have something there maybe the rose is there I'm gonna snip these apart I just think I'll like them better if I do that I'm going to snip this here and here. And I'm going to use these leaves too because I like those. So see here I'm just going to kind of combine them to make it look like they go together. Let's try that. And maybe add that there. Don't want these big leaves here. Maybe a couple of them, and we can use these elsewhere too. Let's just see. Yeah, I like that there. So let's glue that down. This book is time consuming. So this is not one of my quick projects where I just kind of throw them together a lot of times. This one's going to take some time and maybe some thought and some mapping it out, but I really think it's going to be worth it in the end because it's just so pretty when you see all the golds and the colors mixed together. And I really want to use one of these arrows, but I'm just not sure where to use it. I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to flip this page. And since I have this in front of them, I'll just flip and keep going and look for another page to do. Let's go. I like this stripe page. I think this would be really pretty to have something cute on it. So what about Hope? Isn't that pretty on the black? I think it is so pretty. Let's put that there. This is also a cool way to get to find things in the Cricut software and see what you can use. Now, if you don't have a Cricut and you don't have these little words and things like I found, you can certainly just purchase pre-made things in the store or you may have stamps and instead of cutting them out you could stamp it straight onto the paper and just emboss it on the paper so you can always do that too if you don't have you know a Cricut or a die cutting machine and if you have just some die cuts that would be super cool just to cut them out and then emboss them let's go a little further let's put something on the blue what about this Florida Lee right down here in the corner that's pretty so again, my thought for this is it's a great album to just add photos to and just do fun stuff with and add your own journaling. And you could even make it like a journal. It could be something you use as a journal. And if you were given this as a gift, what if you made extra of these little pieces and then you let them have those to put in? That would be neat too. Let's find another spot. Let's come to here. Let's see what we want to put there. What about some diamonds on this side? I don't know though, they're cool on the black and white. I want to use the diamonds, but I'm afraid that's too busy. Let's just see. I think that's too busy. Let's find another sheet. What about on the polka dots? Nope, that's right next to one of those pieces. So let's keep looking, we'll find it. That'd be cool here. Let's do one here. How about on here? I think this faith would be really cute on here. Just right in the middle. That's just beautiful. The gold is so pretty. I can't get over it. All right, let's flip the page and keep going. Ooh, let's put some of these, um, let's put a couple of these on the marble. Let's put some like that. I like this big diamond. I should have done a bunch of those, but I think I'm still going to have gracious plenty because I don't want to put something on every page. So there's another acetate sheet. Some stripes. Now we're to the back. Let's see how these leaves would look just kind of running all the way across here. That's kind of pretty. Maybe I want them to run kind of upward. 
Let me cut this one away and place it where I want it. This way, if the person wants to put a picture here, they can. Like that. That's cool. Okay. But let's put an arrow going back because it would go this way in the book instead of the other way. So let's put one going back. To remind you that you need to turn around. And then let's look at the back just to see. That's the inside. Here's the back. Let's put some of these on here too. I just love them. I'm gonna glue those down there. I think that'll be cute. Okay, so those are there. Did you see those? Aren't they cute? And I have a couple of arrows. Let's see where we can find a place to put those. I think, let's go in here. Let's put one here just as a keep going. So one there, and one here, this is cute. So to play up even more on the gold, I'm gonna add some charms to hang off. And these little charms are from my friend Gary's store. Can you believe how many of my friends have online stores? I keep digging stuff out and they're off in their store. So this is from Gary's um, Facebook store. I'll have a link for him below as well. This, um, these are kind of bronzy, but they really lean themselves to the gold. But when I put them next to the gold, they really show up well. So here's what I'm going to do. I have this little piece of bronze chain that I saved from a project. And I'm going to take these jump rings and I'm going to hook these little charms onto it, onto this chain. This will probably be hard to see because it's kind of tedious and up close, but it'll be cute. I think it'll be worth it. Almost dropped it. All right, I'm gonna start with this key and just put that one on there. Now, when you close a jump ring, you don't wanna pull them open. You wanna twist them to open and close them. So I'm gonna twist this one back into place. So that gives me a key hanging on the end, okay? Now I'm gonna use another jump ring and I'm gonna add the other stuff. Probably just use a separate jump ring for each one so that they can move good. Twist that. Let's get this big guy and stick him on there. So now you see we have two keys. And I think I'll move them up a little bit as I go. Let's take this small little key. Move it up a couple of rings. Like so. See how it's kind of growing up? I think that's good. Then I'm gonna hang the Eiffel Tower a little bit higher. Now this guy is just for looks to hang off the top here. And I'm going to decide how long I want it to be. Not too terribly long. Something about like right here. So I'm just gonna snip one of these away. Now I can take that chain, add a jump ring, and put it right onto our binding. I know this is tiny, tedious, and you can't hardly see it. I apologize. Grab that. I'm going to put it through one of the binding pieces. And then close it down. that cute hanging there. Now it needs a bow. I think it needs a bow there, so let me find some ribbon. Look at this pretty gold that I found. I think this will work just great. I'm going to run it up through that same binding place where I tied the little charms on. I'm just going to tie this in a knot. And this is wire edge ribbon. So even if somebody, you know, plays with this or uses this book and it kind of gets bent or out of shape, they can put it back into shape and it won't look terrible over time. Tie that really snug in the center. Shorten that down a bit. And tie that tight again. That is cute on there. 
Okay, let's trim this down. And I'm just going to trim it at an angle. Probably need to put a little fray tech on here just to be safe or something to seal the edges of your ribbon up. Just to make sure. There you go, guys. It's all done. I am in love with it. It's got the gold and the black on the front. And then on the inside, you open it up to all of our little accents that we did and wonderful places for pictures. I mean, you could put pictures all the way through here, front and back of all of these pages, and just fill this little book up. I think it'll be so cute. Somebody's going to love having this book. As a matter of fact, this book is a giveaway this month on my Patreon page. So every month I give away a project that I create, that I made, and this month is going to be this little guy. I just think this is super cute, and somebody will like having this in their home, won't they? So if you're interested in that, there's a link to the Patreon below. If you're a member of my stamp club, you're automatically entered into that giveaway every month, or you can be a, a donor or a pledger if you'd like to. All that information's on the page. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Thanks to uh, Brutus Monroe for that embossing powder. Thanks to Melody for this paper that she created just for me and for you guys. Check below for a link to all of the, all of the um, products that I use today, as well as look for that coupon code, because I do believe Melody gave me one, and I'll have it listed down there for you. I'm still playing. I'm going to fidget with it forever. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.